Tonight, the West Pacific continues to burst with activity. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for September 13th. As we enter code red on our tropical cyclone operation scale, or TCOS for short, the West Pacific is in the spotlight tonight with three systems active, but without mention is the Atlantic, which right now is struggling to reform a system that just won't give up. Uh, despite the naming of Merbuk, we still remain at 56 storms that have formed so far this year due to our internal analyst, analyst team, excuse me, I can't speak, uh, already deeming this a tropical storm before it was named. So, in the Atlantic on day 106 of hurricane season, Danielle is trying to reform and I believe right now is the subject of debate across the entire community as to what on earth it is. Uh, now what you see here in the top right of your screen is our internal an analyst team's estimate. Now don't kill me, I'm only the messenger, but they've placed it at a 50% chance of reformation just off the coast of Portugal. Now down in the tropics however, we have two areas of interest as designated by the National Hurricane Center. But our internal team have gone with a 10% chance of formation on both areas of interest. Over in the Eastern Pacific, two AOIs once again persist interacting with each other. One of them has an invest tag though, and it's not the one you think. Yes, Invest 94E has been slapped with a 40% chance of formation, while an uninvested area of interest remains off the coast of Mexico with a higher formation chance of 80%. Over in the Western Pacific, seeing the main star of the show tonight being Typhoon Muifa, our code red storm and currently a category 2 just off the coast of Taiwan and heading northward, is expected to gradually curve northwestward into China and it is also likely to impact the city of Shanghai with pretty strong winds. Uh, Merbuk was also named shortly after last night's live bulletin and is expected to meander out to sea whilst not impacting any land areas. Finally, newly designated is Tropical Depression 16W, which is expected to move eastward and then turn around and then curve northwards towards the Japanese island of Kyushu. And in the Indian Ocean, north and south, it is a completely different picture to the Western Pacific, but that is normal for this time of year as monsoonal activity is ongoing. On to satellite imagery, and you can really see how Danielle is the subject of many debates right about now. Uh, with some arguing about subtropical characteristics, some arguing that it just won't form. Now, we've essentially gone 50-50 here, um, so that's that on Danielle from our internal analyst team. Earl is dissipating but still remains traceable and the two areas of interest in the main development region are just hanging around really, uh, but because of their 10% chance of formation we don't believe that they will both get very far, but only time will tell. Now, over in the East Pacific, 94E is slowly getting its act together out to sea, slapped with its 40% chance of formation by our internal analyst team, and an uninvested area of interest with a higher formation chance of 80% continues to develop off the coast of Mexico. Now, could this be our next system? Like I said previously, only time will tell. Muifa being the star of our show tonight just off the coast of Taiwan as a Category 2 equivalent typhoon and headed for China. Merbuk, now a named tropical storm and headed out to sea without impacting any land areas expected to become a typhoon in a few days, and newly designated 16W heading eastward before a U-turn to the west and then curving northwards to and headed for the island of Kyushu. Monsoonal activity remains uh, ongoing in the North Indian Ocean with nothing tropical ongoing which again like I said is normal for this time of year. The Southwest Indian Ocean just completely laid bare. And here are close ups of Muifa off the coast of Taiwan for those interested. 
So Muifa right now is causing the entire bulletin to be red themed, I don't know if you have noticed. Um, but this is because right now it's a category 2 equivalent typhoon headed towards the incredibly populated city of Shanghai. Now it won't make landfall at category 2 intensity but it is still expected to be typhoon strength. More information on this typhoon in just a moment. Merbuk is expected to become a typhoon out to sea whilst not impacting any land areas as it will continue its track northward and eventually it's expected to reach the Aleutian Islands but that's not ex uh, illustrated is the word I'm looking for on this uh, cone. <coughs> and Tropical Depression 16W is newly designated and is expected to continue tracking eastwards and then turn around and curve northwards heading towards the Japanese island of Kyushu. Now whether it makes landfall there or not is still uncertain but it cannot be ruled out. So here's a closer look at Typhoon Muifa, currently located at 25.8 degrees north and 124.2 degrees east. Now, according to our internal analyst team, Muifa has an estimated wind speed of 100 miles an hour, placing it just on category 2 status and a central pressure of 964 millibars. Muifa is weakening right now as it moves northwards, but it is expected to maintain typhoon intensity as it moves closer to Shanghai, uh, China, even more specifically Shanghai excuse me I don't know what on earth I said just then so right now that is the track forecast of Muifa next up is a closer look at tropical storm Merb currently located at 23.8 degrees north and 163.4 degrees east this system has a wind speed of 70 miles an hour and a central pressure of 988 millibars. This system is expected to skyrocket north becoming a typhoon as it does so and then as it goes off screen it picks up quite a lot of speed and heads towards the Aleutian Islands. Now whether it will make it there or not remains to be seen. Finally is Tropical Depression 16W, currently located at 21.7 degrees north and 138.6 degrees east. This system has a wind speed of 30 miles an hour and a central pressure of 1,001 millibars. Now 16W is expected to continue eastwards before a complete U-turn towards the west, then a northward curve all the way up to the island of Kyushu becoming a tropical storm and potentially a typhoon as it does so. Now people in Kyushu need to keep a very close eye on this system and local to their local weather station for guidance on what to do. Now if worst comes to the worst, you should start making your preparations now. Up next are the multi-model diagnostic comparison charts, starting off with Muifa again. The models expect, except one out, outlier, uh, want slow weakening of this system from here on out. This is because deep layer shear is on a gradual rise, but by five days time is expected to be completely off the charts. Sea surface temperatures remain favorable all the way up until landfall, which is just a few days away. Mid-level relative humidity is consistent throughout the entire period. Now that's not something you see every day. Merbix turn now. The models here want gradual strengthening of this system. This is due to shear remaining relatively low for the time being before jumping as high as the moon for lack of a better term, before failing to make it and crashing back down to earth. Sea surface temperatures are also expected to remain favorable for a few days, but then they also crash and burn as this system continues to track northeastwards. But mid-level relative humidity remains favorable for a little while before it begins to stall and fall, but then it recovers control and rises back to favorable levels. However, this system is expected to be long past extratropical by this point. 16W is expected to gain quite a substantial intensity as it continues to develop. Uh, reasons being is that shear remains on the low down for quite a long time. Not only that, but sea surface temperatures also remain favorable for quite a long time as well. And to add to that, mid-level relative humidity is also favorable for the entire duration of the model run, at least up to five days out. 
finally, 94E is expected to slowly gain strength as Sheer in this system is expected to fluctuate between favourable levels and not so favourable levels. After that, who knows, because there's a split in the models. Uh, however, across the models, um, sea surface temperatures remain favourable for most of the run up towards the end though they begin to dip. Another thing remaining consistent between models is mid-level relative humidity, who'd have thunk? Hovering around the 80% mark which is extremely good for formation of a tropical cyclone. For those who are new around here, the threshold for tropical cyclone development is 60%. Now don't forget you can go to our merch store where you can buy things such as individual animations, mugs and pillows. Oh hi Nathan, how's your holiday going? Uh, also worth mentioning is our line of still waiting for Hone shirts marking over a thousand days of a certain RSMC failing to do uh, any kind of work despite activity in their base in what two or three times by now? <coughs> Moving on, um, West Pacific remains piping hot with 30 degree waters although there's a dip in the temperature between Taiwan, Japan, Japan excuse me, and Korea as that is where activity has taken place in the past few weeks marking territory in the West Pacific waters below. The Bay of Bengal remains around 29 degrees with a bit of toasty 30 degree waters off the coast of Bangladesh, the Arabian Sea largely 27 with temps off the coast of Somalia significantly cooler. Now I know it's been a while since I last did a bulletin of this nature but I personally was not expecting this trend to continue for this long. The tropical Atlantic remains warm with waters reaching 27 to 28 in the main development region, the Gulf of Mexico however remaining with 29 to 30 degree waters and the eastern and central pacific remaining roughly around 27 to 28 degree waters. Onto the sea, uh, sea surface temperature anomalies now. The eastern and central Pacific mostly above average. The western Pacific remains unchanged with warmer than average waters. The Atlantic pretty much above, but isolated pockets of at or below do exist here and there in this basin. Uh, the Bay of Bengal also remains above average. The Arabian Sea mostly below average, but getting above average the further north you go. Oceanic heat content in the Atlantic is making itself known in the Caribbean Sea, but it is also pretty deep in an isolated area of the Gulf of Mexico, and the main development region has small bits of energy the further westwards you go. Bringing that over to the Pacific now, the Western Pacific still remains full of energy off the eastern coast of the Philippines, but you'll find not as much energy the further east you go. Eventually you'll come to the Central and Eastern Pacific where energy present in those basins just pretty much drops off a cliff, especially eastwards of Hawaii. So, on this day in 2004 was quite the activity in the Western Hemisphere with four systems present, two in the Atlantic, including the star of the show Ivan the Terrible, as well as Tropical Depression 11L. And over in the East Pacific we had a Category 4 Javier, which was peaking today and joining it was Tropical Storm Isis. But over in the Western Pacific was a lonely Tropical Depression Hyma, which was on a weakening trend and practically on its last legs. Alrighty then, so that was quite a long bulletin was it? Up next in the Atlantic naming list is Fiona followed by Gaston the Cat. Up next in the Eastern Pacific is Lester followed by Madeline and I mentioned this before but it bears repeating again and again and again the next name in the Central Pacific is Hone. Up next in the Western Pacific after Merbuk is Nan Madal followed by Talas. I hope I pronounced that correctly, apologies if I have not. Up next in the North Indian Ocean is Sitrang followed by Mandus. Bringing things down under in the Australian region, up next is Darien followed by Ellie. First up in the Southwest Indian Ocean this season is Ashley followed by Belita. And up next in the South Pacific is Harley followed by Irene. That's all from me for now, we'll see you for another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.